19, we'll continue with Elijah. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse number 9. And he came thither unto a cave. Title of the Bible study, Don't Cave In. And lodged there. He has just experienced a tremendous victory. And standing for his God, his Savior, against 850 false prophets. And all of that is recorded in chapter 18. And, uh, the word lodged, as it appears in verse number 9, is pronounced in the Hebrew, loon. And it means to stay permanently, to abide, to dwell. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. The Lord came to him. The Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? We go up to verse 1, 2, and 3. And Ahab told Jezebel in the immediate aftermath of Elijah's victory over the false prophets. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Really, it was God working through Elijah. And with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. How marvelous is that? One man versus 850 false prophets. And he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. That's her way of saying to Elijah, You've got 24 hours to live. And uh, now, I want you to look over to chapter 18 and verse 19. Chapter 18, verse 19. Now, therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450 and the prophets of the groves, 400. So what's 450 and 400? 850. Which eat at Jezebel's table. So the contest is on. And then if you would, uh, verse 37. I'll read through verse 39, verse 37. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. Now remember the false prophets had cried to Baal all day long. They had even cut themselves with their uh, blades, bleeding profusely. Elijah had been taunting them, maybe your God's on vacation, maybe your God's asleep. 
You need to cry a little louder, he told him. And of course, uh, you know the story. Uh, nothing. Nothing. But when Elijah, remember, uh, this contest is to prove who the false God is and who the true and living God is. And so verse 38, fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones, the dust, licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and slew them there. Now, their message was damnable. The false prophets preached a false gospel. And their message was damnable, damning souls to hell. And so by this contest, Israel swings back to the Lord. And they proclaim, he is the God. So powerful, bold, confident, mighty, stood Elijah for his God, his Savior. Then we go back to chapter 19, and uh, he has just received this death threat from Jezebel. And I want you to, um, I want you to hear, uh, see why he's caved in. Elijah has caved in. And here it is in verse number three, because something happened. I mean, look, he, here he is standing against 850 false prophets. He, he slays 450 of the 850. <laughs> um, and he's standing powerful, mighty, bold, confident. But then something happens, and we're given precisely what it is that happened to Elijah that results in him caving in. That's why we find him in a cave in uh, verse number three. And when, next two words, class, if you would, please. When he saw that, what did Elijah just do that he had not previously done? Key word is saw. Upon what was Elijah's spiritual eyes and gaze fixed previous to that statement? Upon, upon whom was he looking before this statement? Anyone want to venture a guess? Say what? He had his eyes on God. He had his eyes on God. And notice what happens the moment. He takes this, because, you know, we're not one of those lizards. What are the, you guys know those lizards that can move their eyes in different directions at the same time? Like they can have one eye looking here and one eye looking here. We're not like that. There is a lizard like, I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's, it, huh? A chameleon? Is that it? A chameleon? Crazy. We're not like that. We're either, we're either, we're either looking at God or we're looking at somebody that is threatening us with death. You know. And something just happened here in the life of Elijah. He has, uh, he has shifted his focus away from God to uh, his mortal enemy. Isn't that what somebody's called if they're going to kill you? Your mortal enemy? And uh, when he saw that, 
So when he took his eyes off of God and he put his eyes on Jezebel, what did he do? Verse 3 tells you, what did he do? He ran for his life. <laughs> it's not a big... Well, he had his eyes on God. He could stand against 450 false prophets. But now he takes his eyes off of God and puts his eyes on his enemy. And now he's running for his life. And so, um, isn't that just truly amazing? So let's continue in chapter 19. And uh, the question, back to the question that God is asking Elijah. <laughs> Look what God asks him. What doest thou here? What doest thou here, Elijah? <laughs> uh, I don't remember telling you to go cave in. What are you doing here? Nowhere in the text do you find God telling Elijah to you know, run for his life and go, what's the word, loon? To abide permanently in a cave. Somebody says, uh, well, is there such a thing as cavemen? Here's a man living in a cave. He's a man, he's in a cave. I guess that would qualify as a caveman. <laughs> um, and God says, what, what are you doing here? In verse number 10 comes the reply. And he said, I, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets. Now watch this. And slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it. I am the only one left. Hmm. You see what happens when faith becomes fear? And when faith becomes fear, everything becomes bigger than it really is. Everything is skewed. Everything is distorted. Now, now what did he just tell God according to verse 10? He, he said to God, but now drop down to verse 18, if you would. Uh, and God responds to Elijah's fear talk. Fear talk. What does God say to Elijah? Yet I have left me how many? Well, that's a what you uh, that's a far cry different than I'm the only one to now I I've got seven thousand and one of you. I've got seven thousand and one of you. You see what happens when faith turns into fear? Everything really gets fouled up. They're saying 99.9% .9 of everything that we're afraid of, you know, afraid this is going to happen, afraid that's going to happen, doesn't happen. <laughs> and if the 0.01% of what we're afraid of does happen, God promises He'll be there for us. See what happens when you, a man or a woman of God takes their eyes off of the Lord and gets their eyes on a person or gets their eyes on a problem. Instead of standing bold, now we're running. Now we're hiding in a cave. Because we've taken our eyes off of God 
and we're putting our eyes on a person. And uh, look at us now. Yeah. And back up to verse 11, and he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent and tore the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. That's some kind of wind right there. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Well then, pray tell, where is the Lord? Where can Elijah find the Lord? Where can you and I find the Lord if he's not all in all of the aforementioned? Where can we find the Lord? Well, notice verse 12, a still, small voice. That is referencing the Word of God. That's God's voice. That's God's voice. And so here we see God drawing him back to his word. We're reminded the effect of the word of God in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. I'm sure most of you can quote that. But... Uh, I'll read it, Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Why is God drawing Elijah back to that still, small voice? All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable. It's the word of God, the still, small voice. Uh, inspired means God breathed, means God spoke it, God inspired it, God authored it. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the what class? You see, God is drawing Elijah back to his word because Elijah needs to come back to faith from fear. Remember what happened to him? He took his eyes off of God, and he caved in. What do you have your eyes on right now? Come what may, what are your eyes on? His eyes are on Jezebel. Uh, finances, is that it? Uh, health issue? Family issue? Um, what are your eyes on? Some problem, some, some trouble. Uh, well, this is what happened to Elijah when he took his eyes off of God and got his eyes on, put his eyes on the, on the enemy. And so God says, uh, you need to come back to my word. A still, small voice, the word of God. And if you, if you'll, if you'll hear my word, Elijah, you'll have faith. But you'll also have something else. Psalm 119, verse 49. If you'd care to look in Psalm 119, verse 49. Elijah, you need to get back in the word. Instead of looking at what's coming at you, Instead of looking at what's coming at you, Elijah, you need to get back into the Word and you need to get your eyes back on God. Verse 49 of Psalm 119, remember the what class? Remember the Word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to what? You know, 
Do you know what the psalmist just told us? What God told us through the psalmist? He just said, every promise God makes to you, it will come to pass. If God promises to provide for you, he will provide. If God promises to protect you, he will protect you. Every promise God makes to every child of his, he will do it. And hope is the certainty that all that God has promised, he will perform. That's hope. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. God doesn't lie. God keeps his promises. Elijah, you need to come back to the word. For faith, for hope, Psalm 119, verse 28. Elijah, you need to come back to the word. Elijah Verse 28, my soul, and this is, this is what's happening to Elijah. My soul melteth for heaviness, the weight, the enormity, the care, the burden, the worry, the anxiety. My soul melteth for heaviness. And what does the psalmist resort to? Strengthen thou me according unto thy what? See, what, what God is saying to Elijah is, Elijah, you don't have a need that my word won't speak to. You need to come back to my word, Elijah, for faith, for hope, for strength. You need to get your eyes off of your problem. You need to get your eyes back on God and the only way to get your eyes back on God is to come back to the Word of God and fill your soul. Take a deep drink and come back to faith, hope, strength. First Kings 19, verse 13, And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. You see, he caved in. He took his eyes off of God and he caved in. You want to call him a caveman? I, I guess technically that's what he is at this point. And God says, uh, and, you know, here we are. Uh, and uh, behold, there came a voice unto him and said, what does... What does God ask him again? Did, did I tell you to go to the cave in? What doest thou here? You know, remember the word loon? Do you, do you understand what Elijah has decided to do by going to the cave in? When you look at this Hebrew word loon, it, it's the Hebrew word for lodged, loon. Can you say loon? He just spoke Hebrew. How about that? Do you realize what Elijah, the statement he is making, the word means to stay permanently, to abide, to dwell. Do you know what Elijah is telling God here? By caving in? Do you realize what he's telling God? You remember what he wanted God to do to him before this? Yeah. Well, God, if you won't kill me, if you're not going to kill me, then I'm going to go live in a cave. Do you understand the message from Elijah to God? Do you understand what he's saying to God? If you won't kill me, he's saying, I'm living in this cave, I'm done. You see what happens when you take your eyes off of God and you get your eyes on enemies and you get your eyes on problems and you get your eyes on other, you know, troubles, you name it. Yeah. 
Have you caved in? Are you hiding out in some cave? Just, just, what's he doing? He's hiding out in the cave just waiting for what to come. What is he waiting for? Waiting for death. God won't kill him. So I'm going to hide out in the cave and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wait to die here. Is that what we're doing? Just waiting to die? Just, we're, we're in the cave. We're, we're pulling in. We're pulling in. We're withdrawing. Wow. Verse 14. And he, and he said, and he goes on, he says, to God, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, <laughs> and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. I mean, God asks him twice, what are you doing here? Elijah gives him the same reason twice. And we drop back down to verse 18 again. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. <laughs> Elijah just said to God, Elijah, I've got 7,000 in And I don't know if that includes Elijah or if Elijah is 7,001. I'm not sure about that. But I do know one thing. He's got 7,000 in Israel. All the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Now, verse 15. Now that we now that we got through that, what what is the first command to Elijah in verse 15? What is God's first command? Go. What is command of our God to us go are you, are you sitting in a cave somewhere waiting to die because you took your eyes off of God you traded faith for fear just waiting to die but God knows where your cave is God's message to Elijah thousands of years ago, the unchanging God, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Same message to you, same message to me, same message to Gateway Baptist Church is go. Go. Get out of your cave. Your cave of fear. Get back in the Word of God. Drink deeply. Come back to faith, hope, and strength, and go. So our problem is um, we, we need God's word. We need that still, small voice. That's the voice that talks to your heart as you read the word of God. It's the living word of God. Go. Return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria... And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be the king over Israel. Well, God's taking care of business. I mean, God, you know, it is up to God to promote. It's up to God to demote. It's God who raises up. It's God who takes down. God is in control on this planet. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, Abel Mehula, shalt thou anoint. Oh, aha, Elisha. Look at this. Shalt thou anoint to what? Do you realize what God is doing with Elijah now? Do you realize just what happened to Elijah? Who can tell me what happened to Elijah? Elijah made the decision take his eyes off of God, live in fear, run to a cave, and his message to God was, I'm going to die right here. 
I'm done. And what is God's message to Elijah? You are done. You are done, Elijah. You ever hear the Bible word cast away? Cast away? You know Paul, the apostle? Oh, he did not want to be a castaway. When, when, lest when I preach to others, I should be a castaway. You know, and someone said that's being put on the shelf. Because you made the decision to take your eyes off of God, go hide out in caves. I don't know what your cave is. I don't know. You know, everybody has their own cave. Yeah, they have it all decorated up, and you know, it, you understand? Uh, it's uh, it's go nowhere, do nothing. What a sad epitaph. What a sad commentary. How many people are holed up in a cave? Because they've decided to live in fear instead of faith. They've stopped reading the Bible. They're running on empty. Life hit them hard. Slammed them, dunked them. And I'm done. And, uh, It is, verse 16. Shall uh, thou anoint to be prophet? What's that next statement? In thy room. He's taking your place. Mm. God help us. Is that really the way you want it to end? You want that to be on your <laughs> epitaph? And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So he departed thence. And found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing, who was plowing. Did God choose a lazy man, or did God choose a man that was willing to work hard? What kind of man did God choose here? <laughs> there were no John Deere tractors. There were no Massey Ferguson's. There were no Ford's. There, it was just uh, <laughs> plowing with how many yoke of oxen? Twelve yoke of oxen before him. <laughs> Can you imagine being behind a plow that is being pulled by twelve yoke of oxen? <laughs> There's no air conditioned cab. Choke, choke, a lot of dust. A lot of sweat. Look who God chose. Someone said laziness is the scourge of the ministry. Lazy ministers, lazy preachers, lazy pastors, lazy churches. And Elijah passed him by. Elijah passed him by and did what? Last statement, please. That's a mark of authority. It's the transfer of power. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother. It's the call of God. And that mantle was passed from Elijah to Elisha. Elisha knew what that meant. God has called me. God has put his hand upon me. God has called me to his work, his service. He said, I've got to go tell mom and dad goodbye. 
And then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, go, go back again, for, for what have I done to thee? You know, I, I'm not stopping you. I'm not going to keep you from giving your mom and dad a hug and a kiss and loving them. And, and uh, verse 21, he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he rose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Second uh, Kings chapter 2. The end of the story. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 9, 10, and 11. And it came to pass... Uh, when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, so the elder to the younger man of God, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And I... He wants to have a, an impactful ministry. He, he wants his life to count in incredible ways for God's honor and God's glory and God's work. And he's asking for a double portion of the power of God that had been placed upon Elijah. Elisha wants, Elisha understands I can't do this without God's power. Without me, you can do nothing. And uh, he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing, verse 10. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Now, what did Elijah the elder just say to the younger Elisha? What is the message there? What is the lesson there? Well, here it is. Elijah says, if you are faithfully serving God, if you stay faithful, faithful to the Lord, faithful to to the work of God when I am taken and you're found faithful by God because you're there you witness me being taken and the only way that's going to happen is if you stay faithful you're not off in some cave somewhere no you're staying faithful you'll have a double portion of the spirit the power of Almighty God. Well, verse 11, And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire. You know, they talk about, you know, they're, they're seeing a lot of uh, sights in the heavens. A lot of bright lights. A lot of, a lot of fast movement. And, and, and much of it is assigned to demonic activity. But here's some light, here's some fire that can only be assigned to godly activity. And uh, part of them, both asunder, Elijah went up by a whirlwind. And where did he go? Isn't that what God said would happen? If you ever come to the place as a child of God, you can read all about it. In fact, let's close with it in John, John the Gospel, chapter uh, 15. Be good. Isn't that what God said would, would happen? If, if, you, if, you, if you dig your hills in and you decide you're going to cave in and you're not going to, uh, you know, you're, you're not going to live a life that, uh, of obedience and faith and, and, 
in, in, in a life that honors and glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ. You dig your hills in and know, I'm going to go live in a cave, and, and, and that's it. Uh, well, John 15, every branch in me, can you finish it, first statement? Every branch in me that what, class? That beareth not fruit, what does God say he'll do? He says, I'll take you. And he did. And he still does. A word to the wise. The word of God to the wise. But isn't it marvelous? Even though Elijah fell, even though he messed up, even though Elijah goofed up, made a mistake, where does the Bible tell us? Nonetheless, he went. Because you're not saved by works, you're saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. How wonderful that it is. So what do you got your eyes on? What are you focused on? We see what Elijah focused on, and it was, it was his undoing. Oh, God never stopped loving him. God never stopped caring about him. God went looking for him. Um... Father, thank you so much from this great testimony of your word. We're reminded again, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. However, as it concerns works after our salvation, should we ever decide we're going to cave in because we've chosen fear instead of faith and we're just not going to get out there and go and preach the gospel to every creature. We've been reminded that uh, uh, you, you took Elijah and you still take, you still take your children and that, that's all at your discretion. You're the righteous judge. But, but the fact remains, uh, if we go cave in and, and we're going to you know, hide out in a cave because we've chosen fear instead of faith, we've gotten our eyes on the, on the problem instead of keeping our eyes on the Lord, where do you find us tonight, Lord? Do you find us hiding in some cave? Or do you find us willing to go? The eyes of the Lord are in every place. And, uh, you know, Lord, I, I'm, as always, I'm especially praying for any person listening to God's word right now that has never before accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior. I'm praying. Wherever they are and whoever they are, you would draw them to Christ, Father. That's what you do. The Holy Spirit convicts them and Jesus saves them. Oh, I pray you draw them to Jesus right now. I, and, and if you're being drawn to Jesus right now, even as you listen to this message and this invitation, won't you, won't you pray? Won't you, won't you invite Jesus to come into your life right now won't you admit won't you confess to him that you've sinned against god won't you admit it won't you won't you tell god you're sorry you're sorry because jesus had to be nailed to a cross shed his blood to pay for your sins against god why don't you just pray lord jesus please come into my life please forgive me of all of my sins and save me from hell that I might live the rest of my life in a way that glorifies you, that honors you. God, bless your word, I pray, and bless our time in prayer, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go with prayer.